A uh, couple books on frogs. So my goal here is to get you acquainted. We're going to go through the frogs four or five times. And so by the fifth time, you should have it down. It's not a difficult task because there's only 13 of them, and four of them are not very common. And right now, tonight, if we get a little rain, they are going to go nuts. Uh, it'll be a great time to be out in the pond and collecting them. Uh, but I like this little guy by Stan Tequila. Uh, and there was a CD that came with it. And I would listen to that every spring, reviewing their calls. Now, I don't think the new vehicles have a CD player. Uh, so you may have to have your grandkids uh, make you a, uh, a, a <coughs> call on Spotify. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and to, to review them. And I review them many, many times over the last 40 years. So that's a, that's a nice one. Nice color plates. This is reptiles. The reptiles are the turtles and snakes. Uh, and the amphibians are the uh, frogs, toads, and salamanders. But this, this is really, 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 really good. I like this. And, and along with it came a CD. Uh, Michigan Frogs and Toads through Michigan State. <coughs> it's another real good book with color plates. Those, those are the two best books uh, that are out. I, I, I mentioned last time, I wish I had this book when I started my career. Have you considered? Uh, and these are devotions. Uh, parents, anybody grandparents? That's really like grandparents. Uh, and if you have kids or grandkids, this would be a nice gift of the junior college. The year was 1972. Some of you guys were born weren't in 1972. And I took a zoology class in April 15th, 16th. And we went out, we had waiters on, uh, we had a gasoline lantern, and we had a D-frame net, and we're going out at night to catch frogs. Wow. And we're catching different species of frogs, salamanders, uh, turtles, water snakes. At night, it was, it was just awesome. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. And now, I don't have any good pictures. I wish I took pictures. It'd be hard, though, at night, do you think? Uh, right. Of these, uh, they were so loud. Like tonight, they are going to be really, once we get this rain, they're going to be really, really loud. Uh, let me show you a little video clip. Now, uh, he's going to read three articles that I made copies from this book, kind of focusing on the irreducible complexity theme. That came out in 1996. I always called it a master designer theme. <coughs> And this guy, Michael B., came out in 1996. Now, if you have your handouts, everybody have a handout? Mm -hmm. We've got more handouts over there. But he's going to read those to you, so go ahead, Kill. The rare Australian aquatic frog uses one of nature's most amazing methods of reproduction. If other creatures attempted this same method, it would be fatal to their young. After the eggs of the Australian aquatic frog are laid and fertilized, the female swallows them. Sometimes she waits until they have started to develop. But once the young are in her stomach, the mother stops eating for the next eight weeks. After eight weeks, fully developed little frogs come out of the mother's mouth. If other creature can swallow its young, discontinue eating for eight weeks and incubate its offspring within its stomach. The young Australian frogs can do this because they release fine threads of special chemicals which prevent the mother's stomach from making digestive acids. These tiny frogs actually change their mother's stomach from an organ of digestion into a comfortable, protective nursery. How did the first baby frogs, which were swallowed, learn to turn off their mother's digestive acids? How did they learn to pass this ability onto the next generation? Our Creator loves to amaze us with His creativity. Okay, next, next one is on metamorphosis. You know, uh, uh, moss and butterflies go through metamorphosis. Uh, some of the aquatic insects go through metamorphosis. Uh, and frogs go through metamorphosis. So I'll read that one. Frogs go through metamorphosis from egg to tadpole to frog. They begin life in the water like a fish and later develop legs and lungs to live on land and water. This is an, an amazing body transformation. Virtually every organ and body system is radically reworked in a special order 
so that a tadpole can survive while it is turning into a frog. A tadpole gets oxygen from the water using gills. It changes to a frog that uses lungs to get oxygen from the air. A tadpole goes from having a tail to a frog with legs and no tail. The tadpole goes from living in the water to a frog living on both land and water. If evolution were true, how would a tadpole, a fish-like creature, mutate with both the ability and desire to drop its tail, get legs, rid itself of gills, and make lungs? Could genetic mistakes rework virtually everything in order to go from a tadpole to a frog? Remember that it is the life, or it is the frog and not the tadpole that make babies. Frogs in their metamorphosis cry out design. The frog's life cycle had to work all at once, or it would not have happened. Perhaps God chose this unique and fascinating method for a frog's development so he would know he exists. Very good. Turn the page, go to the next one. On wood frogs. And how they survive being completely, pretty much frozen during the winter time. You're doing a good job. I'll Thank talk, you. I'll talk to you all. <laughs> Ask him for a raise. Okay. Right. Uh, have you frozen a frog lately? In the middle of winter, the wood frog shows no sign of life. It has no heartbeat, no breathing, and no circulating blood. Yet when winter is over and the ice melts, this frog returns to life as if it had never been frozen. Freeze a human and he doesn't wake up. So how does a frog do this? It goes on a sugar high. Before the frog freezes, its blood level, blood sugar level, glucose, reaches a very high level. In fact, it reaches an extreme concentration. This excessive level of glucose keeps water from leaving cells and prevents shrinkage. The elevated level of glucose also reduces the liquid's freezing temperature, allowing only a very small amount of the inner body liquid to turn to ice in the cold. In addition, the glucose feeds the cells through the winter when no other source of nutrition is available. It even prevents metabolic reactions like urea synthesis from taking place. Normally, an extremely high glucose level would kill a frog. So how does this elevated amount of glucose come about just before the wood frog freezes? As soon as ice appears on the wood frog's skin, a message travels to the frog's liver to convert much of its stored glycogen into glucose. Five minutes after the message is received, the sugar level in the blood starts to increase. Who could believe that this complex set of processes all just happened by accident? God, in his wisdom, even programmed into the DNA code of wood frogs a method for freezing frogs without killing them. Very good. Then, it, it would going to be nice, you know, my prayer is when I teach a class, maybe you got a student that's struggling spiritually, and we read this uh, in class, wow, maybe there is a God. Maybe there's a God that loves me. And maybe I can have a personal relationship with God. And you just, just don't know what that's going to happen. I did mention, I want to mention one thing, uh, the value of biodiversity. Uh, and the handout that I gave you, you know, you can talk about the medicinal value, aesthetic value, recreation value, the economic value of the species. But the biggest one is that, in my opinion, it is a spiritual value uh, that uh, the creation points to a God. Uh, and, uh, and so we need to use... Uh, the wetlands wisely so the frogs have a place to live. Uh, one medicinal value, this is kind of gross, and I really don't like sharing it in mixed company, but I talked to our president the other day, he said, Gator, uh, Dr. Moreno, you know, you're talking about frogs, you got to share this with the group, okay? Uh, back in the 50s, if a woman thinks she's pregnant, okay, uh, she would take her urine, anybody remember this? Mm -hmm. and, and place it on these glands of the frogs. Uh, and if she has a certain type of hormone in her urine, uh, the frogs will produce eggs. And she knows that she's pregnant. Uh -huh. Has anyone ever heard that before? They can do the same thing with male frogs. Uh, they take the urine 
uh, from a pregnant female if she thinks he's pregnant on the back of a male frog and the male will produce a sperm. Okay. You heard that before? I got a, I got an article on that if you want to read that. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. All right, that was back in the 50s. Okay, so we don't do that in practice anymore. I like this one. Okay, everybody have one? Uh, I like this croaking chart. Okay, this is going over the frogs the first time. Notice we have 13 species of frogs in Michigan. I'm going to briefly go over these with you now. Notice you got the species on the left. They come in three uh, stages, three phases, okay? Uh, the first phase is, is we're kind of getting over the first phase, okay? Uh, and then on the top here are the months when they're active. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, so western chorus frogs. So to me, it's, a, it's always kind of a race between the western chorus frogs and the spring peepers. Very, very, very common. Western chorus frog sounds like you're rubbing your thumb down the blade of your comb. Very easy. Uh, spring peepers sound like this. Beep, beep. You can get hundreds of these guys out. They can be so loud that you won't be able to hear the person next to you. Uh, wood frogs. Notice how long are they out for? See that? They're, uh, it's called scramble competition or uh, very explosive. They're only out for two weeks or so. And then, then they're, they're migrating back. Uh, into the woods. Now, some of the biology of frogs, I'll go over that as we go through the slides. Uh, but they're only out for a week or two. So it's real easy to miss them. They sound like baby ducks. Quack, 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 quack. Very easy uh, to learn. I remember I was teaching a fifth grade Sunday school class. Uh, and uh, this my, one of the kids in my class called me at the college and said, Here, I think we got these ducks going nuts in the backyard. I said, Rod, I don't think they're uh, ducks. I think they're wood frogs. And sure enough, I went over to his house, uh, and there were wood frogs mating, okay? And when they mate, hundreds of them are just going nuts, okay? Uh, and it's just a scramble. It's called scramble competition. Are the, are the calling seasons always related to the mating season? Yeah. Okay. It's the males that are calling. We used to call them the mating calls. Can't say that word anymore in public, okay? <laughs> Politically incorrect. So it's advertisement. It's the males that are calling to attract the females uh, into their territory, okay? So it's very predictable when they come out. And usually there's a correlation between the size uh, and when they come out, except for the cricket frog, okay? Uh, so this is early spring. Notice uh, I like the color here. Two, three days after the ice off the breeding pond. So usually, it's going to vary late March, early April, okay? Uh, and so the northern leopard frog, and I'll show you pictures of it later, uh, their call is very kind of not very common. I've only found them in two, two places. Uh, uh, Roselle Park. I think Roselle Park? Not too far from here, what? This way? This way. About uh, I don't know, what, six miles or so. On the Grand River. If you go there, park, off to the left, they're breeding. Leopard frogs, a little bit bigger, okay? Again, notice the line. Notice those chorus frogs are doing their thing until July, August. Uh, so the, that's the first wave, okay? That's the first wave. We are now in the second wave, right now, okay? And notice there are two uh, tree frogs. One is called a great tree frog, and the other one is, is a Cope, uh, Cope's great tree frog. Anybody have pools or hot tubs? Uh, they, they can grip right onto the windows. Uh, if you have a hot tub, you see something on the frog, and they're very easily caught, uh, they can grip onto things. They have disc-like toes that they can grip on. They have a short trill. Who was doing the trill on the great tree frog? Go ahead. Yeah, very good. Not that long. Very good. Uh, and so that, that's a Cope's great tree frog, okay? And so this, this second wave, notice when the leaves begin to emerge, and the flowers blooming. I would put the flowers blooming first because the, the spring ephemerals need to bloom first. Ephemeral means they, they're short-lived before the leaves are out on the trees, the trilliums and the, and the spring beauties. And so right now, the, the leaves are coming out. So we're in the second uh, phase, okay? Second, second wave, okay? Uh, and so those two species, the great tree frog and the copse green, are really, really hard to identify, to separate those two. It's easy to identify a tree frog. They can change colors. Uh, they have bright yellow underneath the legs. Bright, 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 bright yellow. Very easy to identify. And their call is very distinct. Sometimes you'll hear them way up in the trees. 
sometimes you'll hear in the, in the summer. The nice thing about these two waves, there are no insects out right now. So you won't confuse these with insects. And then the American toad, okay? Uh, toads are frogs. You got drier skin, uh, they don't move very well, thick skin, you got warts, you know, a little dry. Uh, they don't have any teeth. Uh, frogs have teeth, uh, toads do not have teeth. Uh, and there are two species, the American toad, so really soon, anybody hear the toad? Do that same trill, but longer, okay? But longer, they American toad. Can you do it? Yeah, very good. Uh, and uh, they lay eggs in strings, and their tadpoles are black, uh, and very easy. And, and very, they don't move very fast, they're easy, easily caught. Now, the Fowler's toad, notice we've got two species of toads. You can cross this one out. Anybody from Lake Michigan, Muskegon, Holland, Zealand? They're, they're associated with our sand dunes. So they're not around here. Uh, they're a little bit smaller, uh, lighter, uh, less warts. They've got these dark spots with warts in it. We'll see pictures of that, okay? So I, I don't think, unless you live in Holland, Zealand, Grand Haven, you're not going to encounter the Fowler's toad. So you can omit him. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the two, and their, their call is very different too. Notice the Fowler's toad comes out a little bit later uh, than the, uh, uh, the American toad. And their call is like this, very nasal, I've heard it once. I was camping over near uh, Hoffmaster State Park and I heard it over there. Now there's, uh, there's a picker frog and a leopard frog. Uh, they're very common, about two to four inches. They kind of look alike. Pickle frog, like the uh, tree frog, will have yellow underneath the groin area. And so that's a giveaway. Uh, I see them in my front yard. And uh, they breed in streams. And sometimes they call underneath the water. So they're a very another snore white call. If you have them hand in hand, they're easy to tell apart, but not very common. Okay? So if you see a pickle frog or a leopard frog, it, it, you'll be very fortunate. Now notice the late season frogs, okay? You've got the cricket, the green frog, the mink frog, and the bullfrog. Cross up the mink frog. You won't see them because they're strictly a UP species. Anybody camp in UP? Uh, so if you're in the UP, they look like tiny green frogs. The, cr the cricket frog, their numbers have really, really declined. They're a tiny little guy, little spots, uh, bumps on the skin. I've only heard them at Salt Lake Bog. They're tiny little guys, okay? Uh, the green frog sounds like this, okay? You get a bullfrog. Uh, they're similar, the, the, these are the two biggest ones we have. Green frogs sound like a banjo. Bam, bam, bam. Anybody like to golf? Mm -hmm. Golf courses, you'll hear them. Bam, 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 bam. And they like bigger bodies of water, okay? Usually with fish. Some of these guys that breed uh, in early in the spring, they're what we call vernal ponds. Ponds are, that kind of dry up. They don't have any fish. That's a huge advantage for these frogs if you don't have fish. These guys will have fish. So the green frogs, bullfrogs, bullfrogs here. Uh, green frogs have these ridges called the dorsal lateral ridges. Uh, uh, and then the last one to come out are the bullfrogs. They sound like this. Burr, burr, burr. And fairly common. So the bullfrog is common. The green frog is common. American toads are common. The green tree frogs are common, wood frogs are common, spring peepers, and the chorus frogs. Okay, are you ready? That's the first time, okay? Let's, let's look at the spring peepers, okay? Three lines down the back, okay? It's a race, the first one to come out, okay? So, aren't you excited for spring? I love spring, you got the frogs coming back, you know? The flowers are booming, you know? Uh, the birds are coming back. To me, this is my, I, I don't mind winter. Winter is about three weeks long, you know, have nice snow, white snow, and then boom, spring again, okay? Winter's long, okay? Uh, notice the lines on the back. Uh, they sound like a chorus, because a bunch of them are singing, hundreds of them. And they're very difficult to catch. When we try to catch them, as soon as you go into the water, they're moving down into the mud. So they're very difficult to catch when we go out at night with gasoline lanterns, hip boots, and, and waders. So that's the chorus frog. Uh, notice that she, now, I, in your package that I gave you, I got all the information of how, you know, the key characteristics, the type of call that they make, and some interesting facts. So all that is in that package that I gave you. It's about halfway through the package. So that's, that's the Western chorus frog. Fairly common. How many people live near, you got a pond, a marshy area, 
Uh, very easy, okay? Sounds like you're rubbing your thumb down the blade of your comb, okay? Spring peepers, okay, another little tiny guy. An X on the back. Notice that that's the name Northern Spring Peeper. The sci scientific name is Sue Acres Crucifer because it's got an X, it's got a cross. It's the only Christian frog that we have <laughs> in Michigan. Crucifer, okay? Beep! Loud, beep. Uh, hundreds of them. Beep! Really loud. We've been in ponds at night where you couldn't even hear the person next to you if they're so loud. Hundreds of them. Very, 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 very common. Okay, they've been singing for a long time. Uh, here's the wood frogs. <clears throat> Notice they have two vocal sacs. Uh, they have a ridge down the back, too, called the dorsal, dorsal top, lateral side, dorsal lateral ridges. They sound like baby ducks. Quack, 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 quack. They're very explosive. They're, notice that chart there. They're only out for two weeks. They, these guys actually migrate. Uh, and they take the same route year after year after year. Another, uh, with another design paper just waiting to be written by some of our younger people. Like fish, like the salmon migrate. Uh, these guys are migrating uh, about a half a mile to a mile, taking the same route to the same stream, to the same pond in the middle of the woods, okay? Uh, the wood frogs sound like what? Uh, ducks. Baby ducks. Whack, quack. The next little video clip, you're going to hear the real thing. Here's a leopard frog, two to four inches, okay? Rounded spots. Their, their call is very store like. Uh, the Roselle Park. Uh, is a good place to see them and hear them. Okay? If you park there, kind of go off to the left, there's some little ponds over there. That's where, where I've seen them. Uh, the leopard frog. That's the first wave. Okay? Uh, we are now in the second wave. Okay? Uh, notice the tree frogs. Again, these are the ones that will be gripping onto your windows. Anybody have a pool? You might have them in your pool. I get them in my hot tub. They're real easy to catch. Uh, they have yellow underneath the legs. Okay? That's a giveaway. Uh, they have a short trail, similar to a toad, but shorter in length. Sometimes you'll hear them way up in the trees. A lot of times I'll hear them on golf courses. The great tree frog. There are two species. The call is really, you got to listen to both calls to help you identify. The great tree frog is more common than the coach great tree frog. There's a different numbers in chromosomes. I don't know, I've never done that before. One's diploid, one's tetraploid. Uh, I was going to ask Nigel if he could help me do that, Dr. Crompton. Uh, but but they're, they're beautiful. This is Michigan's most handsome frog, yellow underneath the legs. Okay? Here's a toad. Okay? Um, notice a little darker. The trill is a giveaway. Toads are frogs. Okay? Uh, they're just a little, they're different. They don't move very fast. They don't have any teeth. They got thick skin. Uh, and uh, notice the, the dark spots. They have one wart in the dark spot. And they're very really common on golf courses. When, once they come out, we have them on our campus. Very, 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 very common. Okay. Here's the Fowler's toad, a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit uh, lighter in color, and, and, the, and then the call is really different. Notice the yellow. I have these in my front yard. Okay. Uh, I'm on the headwaters of Bear Creek, and, and they're, they're, they're breeding in Bear Creek. I think I've only heard them once. I only see about five or six of them in my front lawn. Uh, yeah, as a pickle frog. Similar to leopard frogs, a little bit smaller, habitat's different, they come out later, okay, the pickle frog. <coughs> not very common. Leopard frogs, pickle frogs are not very common. Anybody ever see these? Okay. Uh, this is the, these have taken a major hit. Uh, the cricket frogs, uh, their numbers have really, really declined. They're a tiny little guy. The only place where I've seen these, these are at Salt Lake Bog, okay. That's out near Townsend Park. Uh, owned by the West Michigan Land Conservancy. It's a neat place to go. That's where the bog's at. That's where you have pitcher plants, sundews, plants that eat insects. It's kind of a neat spot. And then the green frog. What's this sound like? Remember the green frog? Banjo. Bam, 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 bam. Remember, it's the uh, the second, the third wave now. So they're they're out, uh, but they're not calling yet. Okay, so they're in the ponds. They're out of hibernation. They're out there, but they're not calling yet. The northern green frog. Uh, the males uh, will have uh, bright yellow chins. The females will have white. So you can you can determine the gender by their color of their chin. And then here's the main frog. Where do you find these? UP. UP. They cross him off the list. You're not going to find a mink frog. They kind of kind of look like small green frogs to me. Uh, their calls really are. And the bullfrogs. 
Very distinctive. So we're here in Jasper County in Northwest Indiana, and we're at this marsh on the first warm day of late winter. And this habitat is a great place to monitor Can we get the lights, Jim? Yep. My God. The kinds of amphibians that typically come to these ponds are going to be animals that spend their life on the land and then come to the water to lay their eggs and, and develop. Um, in the woods, we're going to have uh, species coming out, including the spring peeper, blue spotted salamander. Out in the fields, we're going to have species coming out, the frog, frogs, frogs, frog. the frogs, and the tiger salamander. Wetlands like these are very valuable to certain species of animals like frogs and salamanders because it's deep enough that it will hold water through the spring into summer so that their eggs can develop and their tadpoles can develop. But it will often dry up in the summer or in the winter freeze to the bottom. And this is important because it keeps fish out. Uh, when you have a deeper body of water like a lake or a pond, the fish come in and they're natural predators on the amphibians. We have some species that come out at this time of the year, March, early April, when the temperatures are uh, getting above 45 degrees at, in, in the nighttime. That's a call of a leopard frog. Call of a snow light. Not and common. as spring warms up and we start getting evenings where it's 55 degrees, then another wave of species. Great tree frogs. Great tree frogs. Yeah. And then finally in the summer when the temperatures are uh, in the evening getting above 65 degrees, then we have our last wave of uh, species coming in. Male. Wow. One advantage of coming out early is that you can exploit that resource before other species. Those are wood frogs. Now they're only out for two weeks. But on the other hand, the advantage of, of breeding a little bit later is with warmer temperature, you can grow faster. With warmer temperature, you don't run the risk of freezing. The species that breed first, they're at the risk that if we get another cold snap and the pond freezes over, that their eggs can freeze. So you, so you have one advantage of being out early, but a disadvantage associated with it. And it's the balance between those two that, that works out best for each species. Toads and chorus frogs. Toads and chorus frogs. A swamp is a wooded wetland trees or shrubs. Marshes do not have trees or shrubs. Spring people, they have two different calls. That's the mating call. Can't say mating calls. Attraction call or advertising calls. That's a stutter. Notice the difference between those two calls. For years, I thought that was a chorus frog. So they have two different calls. Very, very, very common. So you got frogs. If you got water, you probably have spring peepers. When I was a kid, we used to we used to go get uh, pollywogs out of the oh uh, yeah uh, yeah puddles and so forth. Yeah, that's that, an interesting means uh, of delivering. Their yeah, and that, you know, that whole one page talked about that transformation. Of all those things have to change at the right time at the same time yeah. they get into the adult stage and you know butterflies do that some aquatic insects other insects do that again that complexity is it, that true of all the frogs you know the difference yeah yeah the if you yeah if you're really good because they all need water so they're going to be all in the water if you're really good I, i'm not that good i bet this guy is the guy that you could identify the different species from their frog uh, eggs and it's amazing oh and I, I, I i've seen this you know, it's a little tiny frog but their egg mass is about this big about the size of the softball and what happens is they absorb water uh, the eggs are being like oh here's another interesting thing frogs have external fertilization uh, which means you know the female comes by lays the eggs the male it's called in plexus will mount the female and will release the sperm uh, and so that's external fertilization 